Coming up in the news tonight, the police chief detailing how police-involved killings are handled, the leader of the Christian community hopeful for the year ahead, and is some advice for aspiring local government councillors. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Northern Edition for New Year's Eve. Friday, December 31st, 2021. Good evening all, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping news tonight, as the government continues its fight against the global pandemic, tonight the nation's chief prime minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, explains why certain decisions were made to contain the spread of the highly contagious COVID-19 disease among residents, as health officials believe that the Omicron variant is now in the country. As the government continues its efforts to manage the COVID-19 pandemic, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis says this festive season, concerns have been raised as to why hotel properties are being allowed to have New Year's Eve outdoor events while Bahamians have limitations for their events. Our health protocols are designed to reduce transmission risk while still supporting economic activity. Often, these twin goals are in contradiction with each other. It's not easy balancing act. It is not an easy balancing act. And you may think we get some of these decisions wrong. But the primary health goal is to slow transmission among Bahamians, to protect our people and to protect our hospitals from the coming onslaught of cases. With that in mind, we are asking the hotels to take steps to protect Bahamian staff, and we are asking Bahamians to reconsider attending these events. The reopening of school in the new year has been pushed back two weeks due to any possible surges in COVID cases following the Christmas holidays. Prime Minister Davis says this is regrettable. The loss in face-to-face -face education has been one of the biggest casualties of the pandemic. And we must make every effort to ensure that students are not left behind in fulfilling their potential. I'm pleased to report that work on getting the buildings ready for the return of students and staff has been almost full time in recent weeks. Most of the premises are ready, but a two week delay will allow those returning from abroad sufficient time to quarantine and thereby help to keep our school communities COVID free. And as the country has seen a spike in COVID cases recently, the Prime Minister is appealing to Bahamians to do their best to protect each other. Some people have diseases or take medication that does not allow them to build strong immunity to the disease, even when vaccinated. We do not yet have pediatric vaccines in the country. There's no approved vaccine yet for children under the age of five. They are the people I want, these are the people I want you to think about when you make your New Year celebration plans. The situation here has changed quickly so that we was safe. So what was safe, even last week, is no longer safe. As you know, we have limited the size of gatherings to reduce the risk of super spreading events. In other news, Commissioner of Police Paul Roll revealing crime statistics for the year 2021 during a press briefing in the nation's capital. According to the commissioner, there were 13 police-involved killings this year. Just last week, a young man, a wanted suspect, was shot and killed by police in Hunters. Commissioner Roll shares how these matters are being dealt with. When these incidents happen, just like murders or any killing, the family has an interest in knowing what happened. What I have done is to appoint my own committee within the Royal Bahamas Police Force, which is comprised of uh, Deputy Commissioner Fernando, um, Assistant Commissioner Lehman Delavo, Assistant Commissioner Chivago Dames, and Father Stephen Davies. And I have mandated them to look at every one of those police involved shootings. We have five files right now 
that I had some concerns with and I've asked that we begin with those. Uh, based on information that I've been getting from members of the public, and I've asked them to review those files. And once they are completed, then I will make my recommendation to the coroner. If you're familiar with the Coroner's Act, it gives the coroner certain powers where they either satisfied that the action was justified or not justified, and if we believe either way, and then it goes on to the Attorney General. The police chief also gave details of recent promotions throughout the Royal Bahamas Police Force. We have two deputy commissioner, and Clayton Fernanda, I put him responsible for crime, assist me with crime, and Mackey, uh, deputy commissioner Mackey, will focus on discipline, the internal discipline of the force. So two of them work in tandem. We had 25 chief superintendents. Okay, two assistant commissioners, which is, uh, you've seen with Bernard Bonamy Jr. and Ms. Mrs. Delores Ferguson. And Bonamy has responsibility for family islands operation, family island policing, which is very big. And Mrs. Ferguson has responsibility for uh, HR and training, which is also uh, a huge feat. And then, of course, we have, like I said, the 25 um, chief superintendents, there were 60 superintendents, uh, 87 assistant superintendents, and 98 inspectors, and 325 sergeants, 325 corporals, and I need another 100 constables to go in training. As 2021 comes to a close and a new year is ushered in, the leader of the Christian community on Grand Bahama is addressing the issue of crime. Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart is admonishing Bahamians to be vigilant and to do what is right to help curb crime in the country. President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart, says the fight against crime must be a concerted effort. I would encourage us some people, let's continue to pray. And not just pray, but let's encourage, you know, for many of us, especially in the communities where some of these crimes take place or wherever they take place, um, we know people. We know nieces, nephews, cousins, friends. Um, some of these young people are young men. Uh, we know them. And so I want to encourage us. Let's talk to our uh, uh, fellow neighbors, when we see someone doing something that's out of the way, let's have a, uh, let, let's have a conversation with them. Um, let's try to calm the situation. Let's try to encourage um, our young men and um, who we know might have a propensity to respond violently or vengefully, um, to have a conversation with them and to talk with them and encourage them to do the right thing. The religious leader is admonishing Bahamians not to take matters into their own hands, but rather allow the law to take its course. We have systems in our country to deal with injustice, to deal with crime, and if we take those steps, um, um, let's not take matters into our own hand, and let's continue to be a great little nation. And when we allow crime and things that need to proliferate, they hurt who we are as a people. And um, so I want to appeal to all of us in the community, all of us can play a role and, um, um, in seeking to curve crime. And when we know of persons that are involved in criminal activities, whether they're family members, friends, or neighbors, let's report it to the police. And to the criminal element, Reverend Lockhart is making this appeal. I want to appeal uh, to those persons in the community that um, um, this is really not what we are as a Bahamian people and that we're not helping ourselves in any way when we turn to killing and harming and hurting one another. And so I want to make an appeal to, to, to those persons in the community that carry guns and weapons and, and, um, and seek to solve their problems in violent ways. Let's bring that to an end. And, um, and let's move forward because as a country, this is our time to pull together as a people, trusting God, working together to move forward um, and, and continue to navigate um, through this situation. And as we prepare to welcome a new year and as the government and stakeholders search for solutions to rebuild, recover and revolutionize Grand Bahama, President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart, remains hopeful for the year ahead. It is my prayer that the hotel will be um, um, sold 
and that um, um and you would get um some good hotel owners that'll bring that property to life where um persons can be hired again and and get back to work in the hotel in restaurants and other tourists connected industries. Um, other smaller hotels would also begin to open. Um, the airport, it is our prayer that the government would look at getting the airport back on track as soon as possible so that we can also see increase of airlift and see the um, all of the necessary um, um, modern facilities put in place so that we can see more flights coming into uh, coming into Island of Grand Bahama. Hotels um, um, are reopened, and so this is our prayer for the future. And our prayer that uh, uh, that government, as well as with local and foreign investors, um, would work hand in hand expeditiously to turn the economy of Grand Bahama around. Meanwhile, cameraman Quentin Gordon and his senior clerk, Tizal Blatch, took to the streets today to find out what residents are hoping for in 2022. I thank God for bringing me this far and um, keeping me in good health and for allowing me to have time to spend with my family, my friends, and to actually support those of my friends who have had traumatic losses this year. But with all of that, we say God is good, and I'm looking forward to a new year where I can serve Him better and get closer to Him in my relationship. My resolution is to serve the Lord more, and that we would all be healthy and be prosperous in the new year coming. Because last year, I mean this year and last year, was a little hectic for us. But thank to God, we are all here and we are alive to see 2021. Hope we will see 2022. The grace of God will be another couple hours from here. But I thank God for what it is. Firstly, I want to thank God for um, bringing me thus far, you know, with all the COVID and everything that was happening around us, you know, that, you know, you're still with a job, still with an income. I'm, I'm thankful for the blessing that I've been receiving over the past month, and I hope things, you know, into the New Year's continue to be this way and even better. And most of all, Happy New Year's to the whole Bahamas. The New Year be, you know, bring us more peace and love and less crime and also that we could get over this pandemic. You know, we just have to have hope and most of all, put Christ first. So that's my, you know, New Year's wish for everyone. Happy to be alive today. And I hope that the New Year's will see much more people coming into consciousness, awareness, that there's a God up above and that we surrender and serve him. You understand? I wish all the best for each and every one this new year and the rest of life to come. I'd like to say Happy New Year as the, um, um, to the disabled community here in Grand Bahama, at, the, uh, at least in the Northern Bahamas, as the president for the Northern Bahamas Council for the Disabled. But going forward, I would like to admonish the general public to take more care, show um, more care to persons with disabilities when you um, see them moving about in the community, especially the disabled parking. That's a big concern here in Grand Bahama, I should say, and I would like to see moving forward um, the laws or are enforced and I wish the entire, com the entire community a happy and a prosperous new year. It's nice and good and happy to know that we're going to live through the next part of this, this year, which is the last day of the year, and hoping that next year that everything that, that is going on comes to a full stop. Uh, for what we have been through uh, this year and the past year, I, I think things can only be better now, okay? So the country is open and everything. That's all I can say. We hope for the best. I really don't have a New Year's resolution for myself, but what I'd like to see in Three Fort Grand Bahama is more opportunities for the locals, um, new businesses um, 
opening up. Bless the Bahamas, God bless everybody. But we, we wish next year would when uh, less disease and the people will be happy and pray God more because what's going on. So we need to pray, uh, keep faith, and God will change everything. Stay with us, there's more news after this. Cindy Russell, Happy New Year blessings to you and your family for 2022. Love, peace, health, blessings, and wealth. I am Avery Forbes, wishing all a Happy New Year blessing with love. Wishing everyone a Happy New Year. I hope you all stay safe and I hope you all stay blessed.